a rented bicycle, uh, went around the entire township and mapped and counted all these amenities. So for those who can't, uh, in the distance and can't read, the first one is food and beverage, the, in, the, in, the, in the warm colours, then you have groceries, you have uh, the, the, the well, spas and salons and all that stuff in the, in the red um, hue, healthcare in the blue, and then garments and you know, um, dressing and all that stuff. But what is interesting here is really the numbers. I have circled some of these uh, numbers here for you to, to look, look at. Um, hawker centres, 10 of them. If you add up all these food courts and, 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 and shops that sell drinks, etc., etc., and restaurants, restaurants are 41 of them. Um, sundry store, all, all those provision stores and mini marks, 100 of them. Um, massage parlours, uh, hair salons, 136 of them. Almost 80 clinics, 20 dental clinics, accessories, all sorts of things, garments. Amazing, isn't it? And, and if you map them out, you see how well distributed they are. All this within 400 meters walking distance, totally covering the entire new town. I mean, I was very surprised when I did this piece of work with my graduate student. We, we mapped out six new towns. Um, in great detail, uh, and this is this is amazing. Uh, um, I think if you, you do the same to Tapayo, you do the same to uh, Clementi, they all fare very very well. Uh, the later generation has a different paradigm altogether. And we interview people. A grandma number one. <laughs> there are more more than one grandma that we <laughs> we interview. But this is done in another new town, and he says every day. Well, exactly the same kind of structures. Every day I go to the coffee shop for breakfast at 8am and then walk next door to buy food to cook for dinner, visit my friend nearby and back around noon time, etc, etc. But if you read further, it says by, time, by noon time, you've met up with like half a dozen uh, neighbours, uh, chit-chatted, you know, bonded. You know. That's where the community bonds. And then we spoke to a doctor, Dr. Teo, Medical Clinic Block 109. And this is the case in uh, Clementi. And it says, we should be bringing this service, the medical service, to the people and not the other way around. He was saying that you shouldn't be going to the, to the, to the, to the mall. You should be right at the foot of the, of the, of the, of the blocks. And he said, as doctors, we have the duty of service to the public. And he gives many other reasons why he, he preferred that way. But anyways, so we've done very well. But is Singapore a model city? And what is meant by model city? So one thing I did was everybody goes into Google and they find what they can find about model. So I found that as early as 1911, John Nolan, a landscape architect, uh, was planning medicine into a model city. But there I single out a few words there. Um, it says, uh, well, he submitted this report and he says, the purpose of this report is to try to find out the kind of city that medicine should be, to examine the existing city fairly and frankly, which just now our colleagues have done. <laughs> we have all given a report card of Singapore. With a view of discovering its merits, defects and tendencies, and then to consciously plan for the definite steps necessary to realise a practicable ideal. I think we have done that. The work is undertaken in the confident belief that medicine may, so, may be so developed as to establish a new standard for city making in the United States, but actually also so that other people can learn from it and replicate it. Yeah? Um, the next one, I okay, three reasons why Singapore cannot be a model city. By that I mean it's very difficult to replicate Singapore. I mean if you, are, if you have a model answer, you know, like we can learn from model answer and, 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 and try to answer the next exam, que exam question like the model answer, but in the case of Singapore, I'll give three reasons. I've always learned from uh, Prof. Ko that three is enough, three points. <laughs> so there's this three reasons. The first is governance. The second is ownership and control of land. The third is it's a small city state with definite boundaries. Okay, let's look at ownership and control of land. As you can see here, the percentage of uh, land ownership in different countries. Um, I got this from a Chinese uh, uh, report, 
国土资源情报，哎 ，two thousand and eight， and France is only above the above eight percent. Um, Singapore is eighty ten times more, more than eighty three percent, and still growing, because we're still reclaiming land, right? Um, Canada is actually quite high. I was I was surprised by that, but a lot of the rest are in the twenties and thirties and forties. Um, Russia, of course, is a communist country, and uh, the fact that we can, re the fact that Singap Singapore model could find its place in uh, Suzhou and Tianjin is also because of the Chinese ownership of land, eh, control of land. Look at what we've done. You know, we could we could plan, we could plan and hire Marina Bay and put that in practice. And you have seen the beautiful photos that were shown earlier of gardens by the bay, etc., etc. <laughs> We could do this on a big scale, on a large scale. And then I asked these two slides, uh, 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 this couple of slides is um, provided to me by my good friend uh, Jeffrey Ho at uh, Sabana. Uh, they do a lot of planning uh, jobs overseas, and this one is in uh, India, in Mumbai. <clears throat> and if you look at the colors there, it says the, the light blue one is government. The rest are slums, sized buildings, private development, industries, etc., etc., etc. Et et I actually was asking for other developments that they have done there, which is even more telling. At least this one, you could you could see that they are trying very hard to do a CBD, and they managed to what well, they managed they they plan it. Whether they, whether that will happen or not is another matter. So they they did this stretching across. But really, um, what CBD is this? You know, it's the, the, the land is all fragmented. What I wanted to show here is when you have no control of land, it's very difficult to do planning, right? It, it's very difficult to do the kind of planning that we do, at least. Um, and so, I've seen plans in India where a large, or what wanted to be a large, industrial park is cut up into small fragments and then link Tom Biang Kemal <laughs> by, by a road, you know, uh, very unsatis uh, unsatisfactory. Okay, next, let's come to governance. For la lack of a better um, uh, 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 measure, I use um, our GDP as a proxy, okay, from the 19... 60s all the way to uh, 2011 um, to show the kind of context within which our government with the longevity of almost 50 years now um, could put in place policy after policy um, in different contexts and the continuity uh, and of course with the continuity the accountability yeah? so let's look at transportation Say a smooth and seamless journey is the important feature of livable cities. So, as uh, Mr. Ku has shown you earlier on in the 50s, we were a basket case. Right? We had uh, uh, terrible transport problems with mosquito bus companies, pirate taxis, etc., etc., and people hanging out. I, I remember when I was a uh, uh, schoolboy, I was hanging precariously to <laughs> uh, from the bars of the uh, doors of the uh, uh, buses. Um, anyways. Um, I, would, I would not go into this detail, except to say that, yes, we have a, uh, the last point there, concept plan in 71. And then look at this, 72 to 21, we have all those things that I, 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 I wrote there, you know, the, our, our, our decision to build the MRT in 82, and that was when the, the, our GDP was almost at the 20 billion, and we still had to borrow from the uh, uh, World Bank. And then um, we, s we implemented in 75 our air license scheme because uh, we have our, our, our congestion. We then went on to COE, co uh, vehicle quota system in 90. But looking at, looking at this, how the, how the government planned over the years, when we introduced ALS, air license schemes in 75, look at where our GDP stands. Our GDP was 1975, our GDP was really low, right? 